What's up, Ravens fans? I'm Cassie Calvert, and today I am joined by Max Williams, who's going to be taking your questions, so start commenting them below. All right, Max, this game is a little special against Tampa Bay on Sunday because it's our My Cause, My Cleats game. I know you'll be rocking some special cleats for that. Can you tell the fans what those will be? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, rocking diabetes cleats because my brother-in-law actually found out at 26 uh, he was type 1 diabetes, so, or diabetic, so uh, I'm actually having them come in and I'm going to give them the cleats after the game. So hopefully oh, it's a pretty special moment. That's really cool. That's yeah. awesome. So what are they going to look like? What color? That's going to be a surprise. They're going to be nice okay. and blue. It's kind of be like Mark's, but they're going to be a nice little surprise out I there. I like think we have a couple guys rocking the diabetes. Yep. I think it's uh, me, Mark, uh, I think OB, Orlando, and I think mm -hmm. uh, Zia rocking diabetes cleats too. That's awesome. So this is a big game. Last week you got into the end zone. What, mm -hmm. how, what was that feeling to get back into the end zone this season? It's always great to score, but, uh, I mean, we lost. So, I mean, it'd be a lot better if we win, but now it's time to get Nick Boyle to score so we can go celebrate with him for his uh, first touchdown. Do you guys have something special planned for when he finally scores? Uh, that is definitely a surprise. <laughs> if Nick okay. scores, everyone be ready for okay, that Okay, we one. have that to look out for. So, since we are on Facebook, I have a social media question for you that I like to ask. What's your favorite platform for you to use specifically? I enjoy Instagram. I think I think uh, the Instagram stuff's fun because you get the stories and you also get to see like the pictures that people really want to share and uh, show their lives with. I think it's fun too because fans get to see a little behind the scenes bit from you guys that like they don't get on like other platforms too. Mm -hmm. It feels a little like more personal. It's personal. I think Instagram gets personal. You can kind of show all sorts of things. I know guys like to go live too when we're doing events mm -hmm. and stuff so it kind of gives you a behind the scenes look of what we do in our free time. Josh, I have a fan question for you. Ask, what's your favorite tattoo that you have? Favorite tattoo? I think it goes between uh, my family crest and then um, the clock on my arm because it's actually the time I was born. That's really cool. The yeah. crest is awesome. How did you just, is that something that is really important to your family? Or? Yeah, well, no, I got it from my great grandma and then she had like a little pennant of what she's had from her grandma. And uh, when I saw it, I asked my grandma if I could borrow it. She just says, as long as I promise not to lose it, and I got it tattooed <laughs> on me, so. That's really cool. That's special. So you carry it with you I do. At now forever. Times. Now it's got the Williams on my arm. I like it. Jacqueline said, hello, Max, first of all. Hello. <laughs> How did you feel when you find out, found out that you were going to be a Raven? Just draft night in itself. It, it's a whirlwind of emotions that whole day, waiting for uh, your number to be called and your phone to ring. And when I found that that moment I was getting drafted, it was probably, uh, probably one of the better moments of my life, especially with my dad being playing and mm -hmm. all that. It was, it was a special moment that I always remember. What like what about Baltimore specifically? Like, what did you know anything? About I knew the a lot. Team? I mean, they got the tradition here that I mean, at the time I knew Joe was the quarterback, mm -hmm. and you know how he is, and he's just gonna be a gunslinger. And I knew the tradition around here of how they always had great defenses and winning games. So I mean, I was excited just to get out here and kind of get going. All right, let's see what else we've got. Remember, fans, you can be commenting your question for Max, and he will be answering them. Let's see what we have. All right, Seth said, "How did you choose the number 87?" It was the closest number to 88. 88 <laughs> was my college number, and uh, when I got drafted, Dennis Pittman was still here. Okay. So I figured 87 was a good number, nice and close to it, and just worked out, Now I kept it. And you stuck with it? I you did. You never want to go back to yep, when he when he retired, I thought about maybe switching back over, but family and everyone already had the 87 yeah. jersey, so I just stuck with 87. I like when guys keep the same number. It's tricky when everyone switches, and then like the jerseys are worthless after <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, my whole family and a lot of my hometown already had 87 jerseys, and so hopefully I just stick with A7 on my career. I like it. All right, let's see what we've got. Joey said, Max, what is your bench press? My like a one rep <laughs> max? I I couldn't even tell. You gotta ask Steve in the weight room <laughs> on that one. Whatever they ask me to bench up, I'll just do my best at Steve it. Steve keeps track of all of that. So That's strength we'll staff. have to we'll have to take him on here and get him to answer those questions. So speaking of your draft day experience, Miguel asked you to describe it. What was that day like for you? You know, I, I didn't know because I came out early if I was going to be a first round, second round, third round. You never really know. So that first day, phone didn't ring. It's kind of one of those, like, you're disappointed you weren't in the first round, obviously. Mm -hmm. But just try to keep my head high. And then that whole next day, that was the worst part, is waiting for the draft to start again that second day in the mm -hmm. second, third round. So I actually, I went golfing with a bunch of my friends That's and awesome. people that were in town for the draft. And finally, getting that second round, just nerve-wracking. I think my biggest thing is I had my phone in my leg. And I kept like feeling phantom like uh, <laughs> vibrations. So I check, kept checking my phone every two minutes, thinking I was ringing. But finally, when that phone rang, I looked down and I was like, I saw the Maryland kind of because it shows what it is, mm -hmm. and I knew I was going to Baltimore. And I was, I was probably one of the better moments I've ever had. Do you tell people like, "Do not call me" during those days? I would be yeah. worried about like my mom or someone calling that's, me. That's and what I happened. Would freak it happened out. like it was like pick number three, and also my phone rang. <laughs> and it was my buddy who was in the uh, the military <laughs> calling me from I think he was like in Florida, and I was just like. There's no way I'm going three in the draft. I was like, answer, hey man, just wanted to wish you good luck in oh draft. I was, so, I just hung up on him. I was so mad. <laughs> like you have to know better. My heart just sank. Cause I was just like, oh, 
Come on. That's crazy. That's like a little heart attack right there. It was. <laughs> right. Michael asked, would you rather catch a touchdown pass or pancake block someone that results in a touchdown run? Oh, man. Tough questions. I mean, if, we're, if, it's, if it's one of those moments to win the game, I think it's just kind of one of those you just want to score. If it's me scoring or the running back scoring, at this point in the season, it's more about you just got to win these games. So mm -hmm. it's awesome. It's a great feeling to score. But if you get one of those great blocks where someone scores to win the game or gives someone else, I mean, you know what you did to help win the game. So, I mean, both of them are just great feelings. As long as get, someone's getting into the as end long zone. As, it, as long as it results in us <laughs> winning, it does not matter. I like it. That's a good good team answer. Rodney asks if you will do a touchdown dance if you score on Sunday. See, I'm not a big dancer. I, I like the old watching Gronkowski when I was in high spike. school, college, spike and being with the guys and celebrating. But uh, hopefully Nick gets in because hopefully we'll have something good planned for if uh, Boyle scores with oh, us okay. four tight ends. I feel like the celebrations have been like a little lacking this year. There is some good teams though. I mean, there's some guys on our team that are good ones, but I mean, you gotta give a shout out to like the guys in Seattle, guys in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. they, they seem like they always got something planned out. So hopefully, if we start winning these games and make the playoffs, we'll have something as a team. Hopefully. All right, I like it. I'll take it. The Bears have done some good ones too. I haven't seen any of the Bears. They did one. like a Motown dance. One really? Night. Yeah, you gotta check that out. It was funny. Um, Derek asked if you had a favorite player growing up. I, I, I'm, I'm biased on that one because obviously my dad was playing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I loved growing up watching my dad and wanting to follow in his footsteps and get to where I am now. That's cool. How Has it been special for him getting to watch you now? It is. I, I mean, I think he doesn't like it very much because he sees and he knows what it's like to play in mm -hmm. games and what we go through. But at the end of the day, I think it's really special because his dad actually played too. And it's kind oh. of the whole generational thing. So hopefully we can keep going one day. So you have to have a son who plays in the NFL. Yep. No pressure. Or have a daughter and have her be the first one to make the NFL. I like that. However it I works like out. It. We just got to keep the tradition going. I like it. I will take that. Joseph asked when we can see a four tight end set on the field. That's we've had it. We've had, we've had the four tight end sets every now and then. Mostly on the short yards things, mm -hmm. but hey, we're all four. If we get all get out there and go do something, yeah. we love being out there and we love our tight end room this year with the two younger guys and, Kaiser, the practice squad tight end. We're having a lot of fun together this season. I feel like that says a lot about your group that you are, A, so close, and that the depth that you guys have. Yeah, and I think it, it's awesome because we're all so close in age. I mean, me and Nick are the oldest guys in the room. We're only in our fourth year. Mm -hmm. And then Hayden's actually older than me. So, I mean, we have a good group of guys, usually once every week or once every couple of weeks, we get together for dinner at night. And just, awesome. you know, it's good to get together, joke around, laugh, especially at this point in the season. Yeah. Just having fun together. And have someone that can relate to what you're going through. Yeah. I mean, we go through much, so much together from off season to in season. It's fun just to get together and get close. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's relationships you'll have the rest of your life, even when you're done playing. That's awesome. Neil asked if you have a pregame ritual. I'm just pretty superstitious about like how I get ready. I always FaceTime my dad. Once I get to the stadium, after I get my cleats on, I FaceTime my dad, tell him I love him. He always wishes me luck. And then I kind of get ready in a certain way. I always right cleat, left cleat. That's specific. Then I have to have the same people help me get my shoulder pads on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get a little superstitious on game day, but so, I like, think it's good. What would happen if, like, one little thing was off? That really throw you off? Oh, you can ask Kevin, the trainer, because I always get my ankles taped in the same way, right foot, left foot, and how he does it. He messes up because he gets in the going. I make him cut off all my tape and just, start Kevin, we got to start over. over. we got to get back going. It's, it's just not working. That is too funny. Speaking of, Rachel has a good follow-up question here. What's your favorite pregame meal? Is you, are you superstitious about I, that too? I, always the same thing. I always get up in that morning and we always have, there's like lunch, kind of dinner meat mm -hmm. and some like steaks and their breakfast stuff. So I always get an omelet, steak, and then spaghetti. That is a really interesting. interesting. You, you gotta know. see Nick Boyles. Nick Boyles <laughs> pregame. It's like a normal plate and like spaghetti noodles stacked really high, but no sauce. Just, just plain noodles. noodles. He just eats the plain noodles and then like three steaks. It's hilarious. <laughs> Every day we joke about it on Sunday mornings. It's, it's like, dude, it's nine in the morning. You don't need a plate full of spaghetti and three steaks on top of it. I don't think I could stomach that at nine in the morning. That man, I he's mean, a machine. you need the fuel. I get it. Nick but... Boyle. You guys need to get Nick Boyle on live because <laughs> you could ask him some of the best questions and he'll have the best answers. That is so funny. All right, we got another good follow-up question here from Jay. What music or artist do you listen to when you prepare before a game? Surprisingly, I listen to a lot of like mellow music. Really? Some Tom Petty. Okay. And then uh, Great Day to Be Alive, Traps Trade. I mean, I just like kind of like keep myself mellow. So I mm -hmm. kind of just don't like start peeking too soon and get myself too juiced up. And then uh, I leave everyone else to whatever they listen to. But I like kind of just keep my cool. That makes sense. Keep my head into things and just kind of focus in. You don't want to like peek before the game. Exactly. You start to get so, yourself all worked up. And... A little Jack Johnson. Just things that you know, I know are going to keep me in a good mood, nice and relaxed. So I don't get too tense and kind of... Be ready to go. That's interesting. All right, we'll take one more fan question. Hopefully it's a good one. Oh, this is a good one. Alto asks, how far can the Ravens get in the playoffs? 
you know, you can't look ahead. I'm going to say it's week to week. Okay. Obviously, we still have to win a few more games to get Gotta in. Get there. We got Tampa coming in this week, so uh, this is a big one this week, and then we'll be on to San Diego, and then we end with Cleveland. Mm-hmm. But positive on that. So we're going to take it week by week, day by day. Had good practice today, and I just got to keep preparing and let the cards fall how they're going to. I like that. All right, any messages for the fans before we sign off? Hey, we just love the support on Sundays and uh, love the support on social media, and we're going to do our best to kind of get out there and make a run at this thing. Perfect. We will see you guys at the stadium on Sunday, and make sure you get there early and get your be one of the first 30,000 fans. You will get a cool new Ravens scarf. We'll see you there on Sunday, guys.